Hello. I wanted to make a Wi-Fi connected garage door opener and I found a bunch of tutorials on YouTube. Let's say it's a $5, $10, $15, but it turns out they're more like $15, $20 and $30. Some assume that you already have a Raspberry Pi or Arduino and others require a paid subscription. All the parts required for this tutorial will cost between $5 and $7, except maybe some wires and a resistor. And if you already have a 5 volt power supply, then it will be even less than $5. In case you're wondering, I'm just cleaning an old prototype board for a power supply that will probably have nothing to do with this project. So for this tutorial, I chose ESP8266 with a relay. Uh, more specifically, I'm using ESP01S. Um, it's pretty cheap on AliExpress, just under $3. And for the magnetic sensor, there are magnetic alarm sensors um, that goes just under two bucks. So in terms of power, most people have a USB charger lying around somewhere. And if you don't, then you can use uh, this one. That will bring your total up to around $7. But if you have your own enclosure or you want to put everything into a 3D printed case, here's another power supply that's uh, a bit cheaper. It'll just require more work. This is the pinout of the ESP01 board. So there are only a handful of pins that we can actually use. For the relay board I'm using, the GPIO0 pin controls the relay, so we can't use that one. We need to use one pin for the magnetic sensor. It could be either low or high on boot or at any time, um, depending on the garage door being open or closed. If you look at this table, you'll notice that GPIO 0 and GPIO 1 will prevent the board from booting if they're pulled low. So if the garage door is open, for example, then the board won't boot. So we're left with only one pin to use as the input for the magnetic sensor, and that's RX pin or GPIO 3. Here's just an idea of how the circuit will look. I also wanted to be able to connect or disconnect the magnetic sensor just in case I need to reprogram the board or take it out without having to desolder it. So I decided to use a double row mail header. You don't need to use it, you can just solder the wires straight onto the board and it'll work exactly the same. I'm going to use some hot glue to keep the pins under the board so that it's out of the way and it won't add to the height or to the width of the entire device. Now I can solder the RX and ground pins to the headers so that the board will be ready to connect to the door sensor. I'll be soldering the resistor to the ground pin, but it can be soldered to the RX pin as well. It doesn't matter because the door sensor just completes the circuit.
Now I'll solder the dual pin to the door sensor so I can easily connect it to the board. This is the finished connector. It's not pretty, but it'll hold. Most garage door openers have this connector on the back. The two pins shown in the photo can be shorted in order to trigger the garage door to either open or close. In my case, I already had a doorbell wire leading to a doorbell that acts as a simple trigger for the garage door. So I connected two extra wires that will lead to the relay. To power the device, I connected a 5 volt power supply I had lying around. To mount the entire contraption, I used hot glue. And the same for the door sensor. For software, I used the popular Blink app. I've included a link in the comments for getting started with the app and to get you familiar with the process. The concept is pretty simple. You upload a schematic on your ESP board in that schematic, you include a unique key which identifies your particular application. Then that board communicates with a Blink server which connects to your phone. And that's how you can achieve two-way communication between your phone and the device. On the screen here, I have the code that's been uploaded to the board. Don't worry about trying to copy it from the video. I provided the link in the description to download it. The Blink application logic can be a little confusing at first. Part of the application is uh, application logic is done on the board itself, and part of the application logic is on the phone app. The logic that goes on the board only deals with connecting the device to Wi-Fi and reading the sensor and displaying the message. In the Blink app, when you create the new project, you'll get the auth token that you will need to connect the device to the phone. In order to open and close the garage door, we'll need a uh, button. I decided to use a styled button so you can put some text on it. To display open or close door status, we can use any of the display components and I'm here using an LCD. Next, I need to connect the button in the application to the pin which controls the relay. Since I used virtual pin 3 on the device to display the message, I need to connect LCD to that pin. Time to try it out. You'll notice sometimes there is a 1 to 2 second lag between you pressing the button and the door reacting and same thing for the door sensor. But other than that, I think it works pretty well.